we present The Grumbleweeds. Albert, Carl, Graham, Morris and Robin in Every One a Winner. It is too, Wilfred. How many did you make it? 448, exactly. That's funny. The last time I counted them, there were 450. When did you last count the bunches of violets and the rotten wallpaper? VE night. <laughs> we're two bunches adrift, Wilfred. Yeah. Uh, did you include the two bunches behind the guard board? Oh, yeah. Well, what about them behind the ducks in flight? Oh, yeah, I counted them. This is very odd. Hey, do you think somebody could have eaten them? Don't be silly, Melanie. The paper. Well, I eat paper. Well, I thought without your teeth, you couldn't eat anything. No, well, I suck it till it's soggy. <laughs> well, then what do you do with it? I'd rather not tell you. <laughs> Try it out loud. There's only one thing to do, Wilfred. We'll have to count them again, together. OK. Starting at the light switch. Ready, steady, go. One, One two, two, three, three four, five, six. six. You're a prize pair of pilchards, you are. <laughs> oh, you've put us off now, Uncle Nasty. Start again, Wilfred. After three. Right. One, two, three. Four, One, five, two, three, six, seven, eight, five, nine. Wilf 17, Wilfred, 12, Wilfred, what are you doing? You said after three. Well, four follows three, so I started on four. No, Wilfred, I meant start on one after three. But one doesn't follow three. You see, it does, Wilfred, in this case. I say one, two, three, then it's one. Well, if you say so. Right, after three. One, two, 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 three. Wilfred, no. What? No, Wilfred. Well, you said go to one after three, so I did. But crying out loud, it's like listening to a couple of four-year-old bonnets. Look, I've mean, nothing better to do than count rotten bunches of violets on the stinking wallpaper. Yes. I'll go to bed. Good night, everybody. Hey, Wilfred, it's only half past seven. Yeah, I know, but I'm tired. See you tomorrow. There's something wrong with him. He wants putting away. Well, far be it for me to criticise my lifelong friend, but I think you might have a point there, Uncle Nasty. What makes you say that, Uncle Rubbish? Something that happened during the night. Oh, no. What do you want, Frida? I want Lucky Nup, who I can't call. Oh, it's these two hooligans, Ernest and Jeffrey. Well, what have we done wrong? All we came into your kitchen for was a cup of cocoa. What was it you came into your kitchen for, Jeffrey? A cup of cocoa. Exactly. <laughs> Sit down and belt up. Rubbish here was in the middle of telling us something. Thank you, Uncle Nasty. Actually, it's quite fortuitous that Wilfred has gone to bed early because there's something I want to ask you all. Did anybody hear anything unusual in the night? Well, all I could hear was click, click, click all night long from your knitting needles, Geoffrey. <laughs> click, click, click. It was all night long. What was it I heard all night long? Click, click, click. It was. <laughs> Well, don't blame me, Ernest. I've got seven bubble caps and three woolly waistcoats to finish by Friday. <laughs> I know, but do you have to sit up all night doing them? Of course I do, Ernest. Well, why, Geoffrey? Because during the day, I'm in bed catching up on my sleep. <laughs> Nobody's asked me if I heard anything at night. No point, you were. 
You sleep in the rotten shed at the bottom of the garden. <laughs> Nevertheless, I do have exceptionally good hearing. But I don't think you'd be able to hear what I heard from down at the bottom of the garden, Ratface. It might interest you to know that I've picked up the scratchings of a field mouse at 150 yards. That's all very well, but I don't think that... It that... might interest you to know that during the war, I heard German soldiers discussing vital invasion plans in a cafe in Paris. What's clever about that? I was in Naffy in all the shots. <laughs> <laughs> all right, Ratface, I'm sorry for doubting you. The good ears of these, you don't come across ears like mine every day. They can pick up a pin dropping in mud at 40 yards, a cow mooing five mile away, and a supersonic bang on the other side of the world. For goodness sake, ask him the rotten question over be here all day. Right up. Uh, rap right face, with your incredible hearing ability, did you hear anything unusual during the night? Pardon? <laughs> Forget it. What did he say? I didn't catch it. I, I was listening for the cow mooing five mile away. <laughs> What's it all about, Uncle Rubbish? Well, it'd be about one o'clock in the morning, just before I got into bed. I just rubbed my camphorated oil on my chest <laughs> and put some winter green in the small of my back, rubbed my legs with embrocation, <laughs> Massage my hands with glycerine and rose water. Rubbed permanganate of potash in between my toes. <laughs> Had my syrup of figs. <laughs> Clean my ears out with my little buddies. <laughs> gargled with my granny's old throat specific. And dressed my corns. Well, I mean, I make no wonder you have to go to bed at half past eight. <laughs> when I heard this noise, like a human being crying out in pain. Oh, I'd have been petrified, wouldn't you, Geoffrey? I would, Ernie. What would we have been? Petrified. Oh, we would. We would. I'd have gone under my bedclothes and cuddled me my little pony hot water bottle. <laughs> well, so would I. So would I. I'd have screwed myself into a little ball, shut my eyes and put my head between my knees. Oh, I must try that next time I'm frightened. <laughs> For crying out loud, let him get on with his rotten story. Right. You were just going to bed. Well, actually, I was in bed, breathing in the vapours from my camphorated oil and wintergreen, when I heard this ghostly talking. It was coming from Wilfred's room. Did you go inside his room, Uncle Rubbish? I did. And what I saw as the moonlight poured in through his window was terrifying. He was sitting up in bed, talking to the wall. I said, Hello, Wilfred. And he never heard me. And then he started to tremble. And he got out of bed, went down on all fours, and started walking round and round in a circle, talking all the time. What were he saying? It was unintelligible, but I definitely heard him say, Who's a pretty boy? Who's a pretty boy? Well, that's it. His brain's gone. He's shot to pieces. You can't wear a gas mask for 30 years and it not affect your brain. <laughs> Well, I think Wilfred's going through a funny phase. Oh, I went through one of them, didn't I, Geoffrey? You certainly did, Ernie. <laughs> I remember it was just after I started wearing those 60% polyester jockey shorts with the cotton gusset and elasticated legs. <laughs> you did, Ernie. I went right off my food, didn't I? Oh, you can say that again. You know, you wouldn't eat anything unless it was smothered in senna pods. <laughs> You're right, you know, I wouldn't. I didn't know whether I was coming or going. Well, most of the time you were going. <laughs> Well, what are we going to do about this Wally Grimshaw? Well, when he'd walked round and round on all four saying, Who's a pretty boy? Who's a pretty boy? He stood up, looked at me, said, Good night, Uncle Rubbish. Same time tomorrow. And went back to sleep as if nothing had happened. I wonder what he meant by same time tomorrow. Yes, it's very, very puzzling, this. Why don't we all meet up outside Will's bedroom door at one o'clock in the morning and see if he does it again. See you on the landing at one o'clock. Right. Is everybody here? I'm here. Are you here, Uncle Nasty? Of course I'm here, you wet. What time is it, Ratface? Hang on, I'll have a look at my watch. At uh, 20 past six. It can't be, you wally. Well, it is. 
It's always twenty past six. This watch has been stuck on twenty past six for nine months. Why don't you sleep? Why should I? It's right twice a day. <laughs> hey, listen. I can hear Wilf stirring. <laughs> well, are we going in or not? Follow me. <laughs> Look. He's sitting up. Oh, Geoffrey, where's he got that nightcap from? I don't know, Ernest, but I want one. <laughs> oh. It's crocheted three-ply tumble twist. <laughs> it is. <laughs> hey, do you know they've got it in the co-op in 14 shades? We're having some. Trying out loud, belt up. Here he comes. He's getting down on all fours and walking round. <laughs> Oh, I don't have a banana. Have a banana. Have a banana. Have a banana. Good night, everybody. Same time tomorrow. Last night it was who's a pretty boy. Tonight it's have a banana. The mystery deepens. You're very quiet this evening, Wilfred. Yeah, I know. You're not hungry, are you, lad? No, 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 I'm not hungry, no. I mean, do you feel like a banana? No, why do I look like one? <laughs> No, I just thought you might like to uh, have a banana, you know. Have a banana, Wilfred. Huh? I mean, uh, <laughs> who's a pretty boy then, Wilfred, eh? Who's a pretty boy? Are you feeling all right, Uncle Ruby? <laughs> yes, I am. I just thought you might like to have a banana. I mean, you don't have to have a banana if you don't want to. <laughs> I think I'll go to bed. What do you want to go to bed for? It's only six o'clock. I don't know. I feel tired. I've woken up tired these last two mornings. What do you mean, Wilfred? Well, it's as though I've never slept. You mean as though your brain's been working hard all night? Yeah, that's it. I'm mentally exhausted. You're just mental. <laughs> I'll see you in the morning. Good night, everybody. Ah, good, good night, night Wilfred. Good, good night, Wilfred. Well, that's it. There's definitely something wrong with him. I've been telling you that for years. He says he feels mentally exhausted. Well, we know what it's like to be mentally exhausted, don't we, Geoffrey? We certainly do, Ernest. That time when we had to make three and a half thousand crepe paper flowers for the May Queen's float at the carnival. Oh, you're so right. My fingers never stop twiddling. What did my fingers never stop doing? Twiddling. Twiddle, 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 twiddle for two weeks. Mine were still twiddling three days after we'd finished. <laughs> I never want to see another crepe paper carnation. Nor do I, Ernest. Mind you, they look lovely. Oh, they look bonny, they did. Everybody said what workmanship. What expertise. Yes, what artistry. Yes, it's just a pity there was a cloudburst and the May Queen ended up sitting in the middle of two and a half tons of paper mache. <laughs> I remember that carnival. I was a daffodil. I stood in a plant pot with a yellow hat on and went as a daffodil. You'd have been better off standing in a bucket and going as a load of compost. <laughs> oh, don't cry, Melanie. We've got enough problems. I'm still worried about Wilfred. Ah, that was very weird last night. What I call weird. As though he's been dreaming. It's been two nights running, though. Who's a pretty boy and have a banana? It's got me beat. Put the rotten telly on and shut up. Good idea, Uncle Nasty. Snooker might not be on. <laughs> I'll do it. And no arguing over which channel we watch. We do it democratically. You watch what I want to watch. <laughs> oh, it's back end at news. And it's hoping to fly out to Geneva in the morning. And finally, it's been two incredible days running for jockey Charlie Perkins. Yesterday, he rode a 150 to one outsider, who was a pretty boy, to victory at York. And today, romped home at 200 to 1 on the unknown horse, have a banana.
Charlie Murphy hey. said last night at Did Terry you hear that? Uh, that was probably the well, best performance hey, Johnny of Johnny Johnny. Who's a pretty boy? Another banana to both race horses. And they both won at fantastic odds. We're sitting on a fortune. Well, Wilfred knows nothing about race horses. He knows nothing about anything, but he's given us two winners in two nights. Exactly. This is unbelievable. Right. Tonight, we must go and see if he does it again. And tomorrow, we'll go down to the bookies and put a pound on whatever name he comes out with. A pound? A pound, you fool! We want to raise as much money as we can so we can clean up, sell everything, the furniture, the lot, and put a fortune on it to win. No, Uncle Nasty. No, it might be a coincidence. Tomorrow, we'll put a pound on, and if that wins, then we'll put those winnings on the next day. Geoffrey. We're going to be rich. Oh, we are, Ernest. <laughs> you know what that means, don't you, Geoffrey? I do, Ernest. We shall be able to afford a knitting machine. <laughs> oh. Never mind your rotten knitting machine. We've got to be in Grimshaw's bedroom at one o'clock in the morning without fail. Is it all right if I'm there without tea? <laughs> time is it, rat face? Uh, it's still twenty past six, I'm afraid. <laughs> it's half a minute to one. Right, half a minute to one. Keep still, everybody. Hey, doesn't he look lovely with his little gas mask popping over the bed <laughs> Hey, it's getting up. Look, down it goes on all fours. Stand by. <laughs> to win silly sausage. Come on, this is it. Sid Squeak, turf accountant. Ah, good morning, gentlemen. What about me? Oh, I'm sorry I didn't see the old lady. <laughs> Um, is Mr. Squeak available, please? Yeah, he's in the back. I'll call him. Uh, Sydney! Customers to see you. Oh, thank you, Mr. Jump, thank you. <laughs> uh, Sid Squeak at your service. <laughs> I see you've met Mr. Stanley Bubble, my chief assistant. Cut the cackle, pal. We want to put a bet on. Uh, certainly. The Sid Squeak personal betting service is at your disposal. <laughs> Isn't that right, Stanley? Oh, quite right, Sydney. Any size of steak accepted? <laughs> Isn't that right, Stanley? Oh, quite right, shouldn't it? Each way bet a speciality. <laughs> Isn't that right, Stanley? Quite right, shouldn't it? Right, well, we don't want an each way bet, pal. We've got a dead cert. A dead cert? Dead cert? A dead cert? <laughs> In 16 years, 6 months and 7 days in the racing business, I can assure you, sir, that there is no such thing as a dead of Isn't that right, Stanley? Quite right, Sidney. Well, this is, Paul. Silly sausage in the 2.30 Sandown Park. You cannot be serious. Silly sausage? Silly sausage has no chance. Especially at Sandown Park. The last time it raced at Sandown Park, it started at 20 to 1 and finished at 17 minutes past 6. <laughs> Isn't that right, Stanley? Oh, quite right, Sydney. Nevertheless, pal, here's a quid. We want it put on silly sausage to win. No messing on the nose. And we'll be back for our winnings after the race. Isn't that right, rat face? Uh, quite right, Uncle Nasty. <laughs> Incredible. 100 smackers just like that. Unbelievable. It romped them. Oh, that knitting machine is as good as ours, Geoffrey. 
One more winner, that's all we need. A hundred quid on a hundred to one winner, and we're made. Grimshaw, where are you? It's no good calling for gas mask gum. He's not here. What? Where the heck is he? He said he was going to doctors. What the heck's he gone to? Doctors for? Well, flatten him. He says he could hardly keep awake, so he's gone to the flipping doctors. Well, we shouldn't have left him. It's our fault. Somebody should have stayed with him. I hope he's here. He's just passing the window. He's back. Right, act normally. Okay. Hello, Wilfred. Come in, lad. Frida says you've been to the doctors. Oh, yeah, yeah. They've given me these pick-me-up pills. I'm getting the old box. I feel fantastic. I've never had as much energy. I don't think I'll go to bed tonight. What? No, no, I'll probably redecorate the house. You've got to go to bed, you prawn. I've got so much energy. I think I'll wallpaper this room, then go cross-country running till about three in the morning. Then, when it gets light, I'll dig the garden, clean the windows, and then I might wallpaper this room again. But, Wilfred, don't you think you ought to just have a little sleep first? Oh, no, the way I feel now, I don't think I'll ever go to sleep again. Oh, I'll kill him, I will, I'll kill him. No, 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 look, Uncle Nasty, I've had a good idea. If Will's got all this energy, why don't we have a party? Yeah! Oh, yeah, a party, yeah! I think that's fantastic! We can play all sorts of party games. Yeah, like cross-country running. Well, I wasn't actually thinking about that, Will. Oh, oh, I think it's a great idea. What we want is a sitting down game, isn't it? I've got it! I've got it! I have got it! Yeah, pass the parcel. We all sit in a circle and pass the parcel around. And whoever has it, when the music stops, goes cross-country running. <laughs> Crying out loud, Grimshaw, packing this cross-country running caper. Aye, I'm too old for that. I've got it. Let's have a sing-song. Yeah! Great idea. We'll have a sing-song. Why are we cross-country running? I've never known him have so much energy. He's got cross-country running on the brain. I'll tell you what, Wilf. We'll go cross-country running after we've had a sing-song. OK. You stupid wad. We're trying to get him to go to sleep. I know, Uncle Nasty. Just leave it to me. Um, is that all right with you then, Wilfred? Oh, yeah. I think that's fantastic. Right. Here we go. We'll have a right good boisterous sing-song and let's see if we can raise the roof. I'll start. rock a bye baby <laughs> in the treetop. When the wind blows, the cradle will rock. When the bow breaks, the cradle will fall. <laughs> it will Close your little eyes. Lay there in your slumber. <laughs> He's asleep, everybody. He's asleep. Seven hours it's taken. <laughs> Seven flipping hours of listening to your rotten, tuneless voice. Never mind, he's done it. All we want now is Will to give us the winner. Hey, look, he's stirring. <laughs> Come on, Wilfred, don't let us down. <laughs> he's getting on all fours. Come on, Grimshaw. And if you dare mention cross-country running, I'll swap your ears over. I can't understand what he's saying. We can't understand you, Will. For goodness sake, Grimshaw, speak proper. Good night, everybody. There won't be any more. Uh, what was it he said? Whatever it was, we put a hundred pounds on it to win. Good Wally, how can we put a hundred pounds on that? It talked a lot of gibberish. Hey. That might be it. There might be a horse called gibberish. 
Hey, where's tonight's paper? There's tomorrow's runners in it. Here you are. Now, let's look. You're wasting your time. We've no chance. We'd be better letting him go cross-country running and moving house before he gets back. <laughs> hey, look. That's it. There. You're right, Ratface. In the 2.30 at Doncaster, 200 to 1, gobbledygook. Brilliant. Good old Wilfred. That's 100 pounds times 200. That's, uh... Oh, I didn't think about it. It's 20,000 pounds. Fantastic. Right, Uncle Nasty, your job tomorrow. Take this hundred pounds and put it on gobbledygook to win. Oh, I am excited. What time is it, Ratface? Twenty past six. It's me watch, you see. <laughs> It's quarter past three. Uncle Nasty should be back from the bookies any minute. I went to look at that knitting machine this morning, Geoffrey. You didn't. I did. He's having it all wrapped up for us first thing in the morning. Oh. He's back. Now, keep calm, everybody. Just, just don't panic. Just try to try, keep calm. Come in, Uncle Nasty. Oh, where's the cash? What cash? Oh, he's giving you a check, has he? Well, I suppose it's a safer thing to do, isn't it? There's no cash. And there's no check. Well, there must be. Hey, well, if it hasn't been wrong before. Where's Gobbledygook? It will last. They had to delay the next race so it could finish. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, this is terrible. All our hopes dashed. It's back to knitted needles, Geoffrey. <laughs> we were so close to a fortune. Yeah. I feel terrible. You'll feel terrible when you hear what won. What won? A flipping, rotten, lousy, 500 to 1 outsider called Cross Country Runner. Oh. <laughs> you have been listening to Everyone a Winner. Starring me, Wilfred, yeah! And the Grumbleweeds. I've got Carl Gray and Madison Robin. But I thought I were best. Every one of winner was written and produced in Manchester by Mike Craig. But I could have done it better. <laughs> Next week, Albert, Carl, Graham, Morris and Robin are joined by special guest Cathy Staff in Cupid Drops a Clangor. That's the Grumbleweeds at half past ten next Friday evening. More comedy tomorrow on two with Don't Stop Now, It's Foundation, a non-stop comedy cabaret. Foundation, tomorrow evening at half past six.